You would think, being 250 million kilometers from Earth, that Murphy's Law somehow wouldn't be able to find its way there. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. Today, on Planetary Television. Opportunity arrived at the western edge of the Santa Maria Crater in mid-December and will spend about two months investigating rocks there. The investigation will take up an opportunity into the beginning of its eighth year on Mars. Opportunity landed in the Meridini Planum region of Mars on January 25, 2004 for a mission originally planned to last for three months. Now for spirits, uh it's things are quite different. Now, nine months after last hearing from Spirit, NASA is stepping up efforts to regain communications with the rover before spring ends on the southern Mars in mid-March. Now, Spirit landed on Mars on January 4th for, for the same mission designed to only last three months. After accomplishing its prime mission goals, Spirit and Opportunity worked for more than five years in bonus time extended missions. Now, the amount of solar energy available for Spirit is still increasing every day uh, for the next few months, said Mars Exploration Rover Project Manager John Callis of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. As long as the case, as long as that's the case, we will do all we can to increase the chances of hearing from the rover again. At the mid-March, prospects for a revive in spirit would begin to drop. Communication strategies would change based on reasoning that spirit's silence is due to factors beyond just a low power condition. Mission ending damage from the cold experienced by spirit in the past March and winter is a real possibility. The rover's motor worked far beyond their design life, but eventually spirit lost use of drive motors on two of its six wheels. This left it unable to obtain a favorable tilt for solar energy during the rover's fourth Martian winter, which began uh, this last May. Spirit and its twin again opportunity, which landed three months after Spirit and is still active, both have made important discoveries about the environment on Mars that may have been favorable for supporting my microbial life. Spirit last communicated on March 22nd of last year, 2010. The rover team had antip anticipated the rover would enter a low power fault mode with minimal activity except charging and heating the batteries and keeping its clock running. With most heaters shut off, Spirit's internal temperatures dipped lower than ever before on Mars. That stress could have caused damage, such as impaired electrical connections that would prevent reawakening or, even if a, a spirit returns to operation, would reduce its capabilities. Now, for vehicles on Earth, whenever you're in a cold environment, the batteries and, you know, the recharging activities, you know, there's a great problem with reestablishing any type of energy uh, recharge or anything like that. So, just imagine on Mars, with the temperatures are quite a, quite more extreme, so the problem is they don't know whether or not once 
uh, March comes around once it enters in the spring in which they don't know whether or not the batteries will establish a charge necessary to uh, reestablish human communication. Now, Southern Mars Spring began in November 2010. Even before that, NASA's deep space network of antennas uh, in California, Spain, and Australia has been listening for Spirit Daily. The rover team has also been sending commands to elicit a response from the rover, even if the rover has lost track of time. Now, the mo uh, NASA and the monitoring is being increased. Additional listening periods include times when Spirit might mistake a signal from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter as a signal from Earth and respond to such a signal. Commands for a beep from Spirit will be sent at additional times to cover a wider range of time and day on Mars when Spirit might awaken. Also, NASA is listening on a wider range of frequencies to cover more possibilities of strength, uh, temperature effects in Spirit's radio systems. Now hopefully, uh, this coming March, they will receive some sort of signal, but in the meantime, they will continue to try to reestablish connections with Spirit. Now Spirit has been through a lot. Again last year, or the year before last, uh, she lost operations of her wheels, which caused her to basically be entrenched in the soft Martian soil at which point she could not get out. No matter everything they did, they could not get her out. Now again, because of that, she could not establish a proper tilt. So without no power, we don't know whether or not she'll come back. So let's, let's, let's hope for the best, hope we hear something. Otherwise, you know, we know that she's gone beyond the life in which she needed. Uh, or the operations which she needed. So otherwise, you know, this gives opportunity for other rovers to come along to to advance technology on Mars and interest. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. This is Errol Coder and this was Planetary Television. It's hope for the best. Hope you hear something. Otherwise, you know, we know that she's gone beyond the life in which she needed, uh, or the operations which she needed. So otherwise, you know, this gives opportunity for other rovers to come along to to advance technology on Mars and interest. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. This is Errol Coder, and this was Planetary Television.